Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Kat. I am the Nurse Flipper. If this is your first time here, welcome. I am a full-time reseller, and today what I'm going to do is show you my top sales over the last two months. I try to do these videos once a month, but I keep forgetting. So there are 35 sales for over $50. They go all the way up to $3,000. I will tell you where I bought the item, how long it took to sell, and how much profit I made on it. Now normally today you would be seeing what sold over the weekend. We actually had our slowest weekend we have had in probably three years. It was horrible this weekend. Sales were really slow but luckily we've had these higher dollars throughout the past couple months to keep it where it's kind of okay. However, it also was 100 degrees in here on Monday. It still is a little warm, but the AC is kind of kicking. The new one comes tomorrow. So we will have a new AC out here in the shed tomorrow and it's been raining all day. So it is tolerable today. So I'm excited to share these with you because these higher dollar items are definitely something you want to know. You want to keep an eye out for when you're thrifting, garage sailing, online auctions, things like that. I'm going to show you right now. All right, so there are actually a few auctions in this and I will tell you if they were auctions. I am going to start out with a Kenneth J. Lane. I also wanna point out these screenshots will show my asking price, but on most of these, I either sent an offer or accepted a best offer and I'm gonna tell you that price as well. So if you do not know, watch out for Kenneth J. Lane marked sometimes with a full Kenneth Lane sometimes only with KJL very very good name to keep an eye out for this first one is a Kenneth J Lane bracelet that sold in under two weeks this is a KJL Kenneth J Lane jewels of India turquoise clamper bracelet gold tone classic I had it listed at $64.99 I did accept a best offer of $50 on this I was less than $5 in I did want to zoom in here close and show you this bracelet and I learned it was in the jewels of India line by using Google lens to find similar ones and here on the inside you can see this one was simply marked KJL paid five dollars sold for 50 so this one's about a 38 dollar profit and this one sold very very fast up next is a single dinner plate they are out there if you can find those single plates worth 20 30 40 50 bucks they are worth it i have found some worth 200 dollars for a single dinner plate so don't neglect the dinner plate section when you are out thrifting this and the next one is a wedgwood this is an antique 1885 wedgwood brown transferware bullfinch dinner plate it was nine inches i did put reed because there was some crazing on this plate here you can see it up close it is kind of hard to see the crazing in that that's why i put the reed and i did want to show you the wedgwood stamp here on the back this is something you would need to keep an eye out for this one i also accepted a best offer of i believe it was 53 dollars i am actually only two dollars into this plate so this one is about a 40 dollar profit up next is an item I got in a lot and am less than a dollar in. So when you are out thrifting or at estate sales or garage sales, keep an eye out for flags. There are some flags that can be valuable, just like this one. And I had no idea what kind of flag it was, which is where our good friend Google Lens comes in. This one did take about eight months to sell, but it was an excellent profit. This is a Defiant Flag International Code of Signals. It was 57 by 33. 
Again, I'm only a dollar to two in. It sold for $51.99. Here you can see that flag up close. It actually had some wear and I did notate that in the listing. And this one is about a $40 profit and it took about eight months to sell. All right, there is going to be quite a few jewelry pieces in this video. And these are jewelry pieces I found in online high bid auction lots. If you are not familiar with Hybid, I do have a video going over it. Or if you join my channel membership here on YouTube, I can look for you for jewelry just like this. So pick this up in a jewelry lot. It was not a name I knew. I did research it and I would say I would remember this name. And this is a Ben Amon. This is a vintage brush gold large Ben Amon brooch. It was a Victorian fleur-de-lis pen. This one, I accepted a best offer of $58.49, which is 10% off of the asking price. Here you can see that gorgeous fleur-de-lis brooch. And if you're wondering about that beautiful picture there, that is the result of artificial intelligence, an AI photo on the app Photo Room, which is what I use absolutely wonderful for jewelry and I did want to show you here what his mark looks like I found several pieces in one lot you can see it clearly says Ben Amon and that was a great sale again an offer at $58.49 this uh, next one was a thrift store find that sold really fast as well was not familiar with the name I did not look it up while I was in the store I just knew the look of this purse. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous resin purse with a pearl kind of swirl. And it still had the tag. At a $3 price tag, I just took a chance on it and it sold very fast. This is a vintage Develli white pearl resin chain strap crossbody purse. I did put with tag. This one sold for full asking price at $64.99. Here you can see it up close. Again, beautiful, beautiful pearl swirl. And another of the gorgeous AI photos on Photo Room. Here you can see that Develli tag. So watch out for this name. They do have resin purses as well as other styles of purses. And that was a great sale at $64.99. Up next is one that took well over two years to sell. I bought it in a lot with other antique kind of flapper style purses. The other ones had a little more impressive, impressive patterns and they sold a lot faster, but this one still sold and it brought decent money. This is a antique Art Nouveau silver floral frame gray and gold enamel chain this one i sent an offer out for 30 percent off so i did have it originally marked at that 97.49 i accepted an offer of 68.24 i was in the profit because i sold four other purses from that lot over the last two years so this one is about a 40 dollar profit and i do want to show you it here up close again gray and white it is a pretty pattern but there's nothing bright there's no birds or flowers it is just a pretty pattern that's why i think it took longer to sell i did want to zoom in here on the clasp of the purse so that you can see the detail but this one was not a name branded one there are several name brands of these purses that do very very well so always open them inside the little kiss lock look and see if you see a name and that was a great sale 30 percent off that original at 68.24 up next is a vintage ambro type photograph i absolutely love vintage and antique photos if you find a good subject matter you can get a really good amount for them this one i accepted a best offer of 70 dollars for a wallet size photo this is a vintage ambro type photo i did put of a proper young woman or girl daguerreotype case 
1850s. Here you can see her up close. She does have some really cool pink tinting done to her cheeks. And again, I sent a 30% offer and they countered me at $70. I paid about $10 for this one. So this one's about a $45 profit. All right, this is the next one. If you do not know these, learn about them. This is a Netsuki bead. These are large beads. They are carved and some of them sell for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. This one did not sell that high. It wasn't that detailed, but it sold in one day. This is a vintage old antique. It was signed. Japanese carved wood bead Netsuki Foo Dog. It was an original. It sold for full asking price. This one was actually an auction. So I only got one bid. I started at 49, got that asking of 49. Here you can see it up close. It does have some detail, but the ones that sell for hundreds of dollars have quite a bit more detail than this one did. And I am less than $5 into this. So this one is about a $38 profit. All right, this is the next one is another offer I sent out. And this was a single vase, but I messaged the buyer and said, hey, are you aware I have two of these? They said, no, they were not. They immediately sent another offer. So altogether, this was about $150 sale and I was only about $20 into these. This is a yellow 10 inch Victorian hand blown painted bluebird amber glass vase i did put enamel i accepted a best offer of 72 dollars 63 this one i paid about 10 dollars for each vase so i was 20 dollars in again they bought two of them at this exact price here you can see it up close the painting on this vase is absolutely gorgeous it was in excellent condition so that was a great sale at 72 dollars and I made about a $50 profit on each vase. So together, the two vases were about a $100 profit. And if you ask why I did not list them together as a pair, you might be wondering that to yourself. The reason is I really did not want to ship them both. But what we used was Instapack. If you have not seen my Instapack video, it is a foam that expands to fill the box and it is amazing. For really fragile items especially expensive ones so i do have a video on how to use that we use it for a lot of our higher dollar teacups and the higher dollar breakables like these vases so we were able to cradle the two of them into an instapack together with space in between they ship there they arrive safely and that one was a great profit all right up next is a painting this one was i believe 18 by 22 so it was a decent sized painting and i was really on the fence when this offer came in so somebody sent me a 75 dollars offer and i was like do i want to pack this on the larger side painting for 75 dollars and i really didn't want to but sales have been so slow i said you know what we need some money coming in. I accepted their offer and I, I'm less than $5 in. I got this in a big lot of paintings, so cost wasn't a lot. And overall, it was a decent sale. This is a vintage portrait of a woman, 1901 by the Madrillan, Madrillan Yen, uh by Pablo Picasso. It was an actual print this one again i accepted an offer of 75 dollars on it here you can see her up close this is a beautiful beautiful print of a painting again less than five dollars in it was in a big closet of artwork i purchased on an online estate auction and this one is about a 60 dollar profit it did take about a year to sell all right, up next is something I feel like most of you should be familiar with, and that is a Harley Davidson motorcycle jacket. Keep an eye out. It is hard to find these at a lower buy price, but if you do, 
they can be a big profit. This is a Harley Davidson women's large mesh teal and orange riding reflective jacket. This one actually was purchased before and returned because it did not fit them. And this one sold for an offer of $87. So I did do 10% off on this one as well. This is my friend Charlene. So I actually had already paid her the profit for this a while ago got it back as a return and then resold it so the profit that was split between us before was about fifty dollars it sold for full asking price and i had it priced higher this time i did price it a little lower hoping to move it faster so really this is kind of a wash because i already counted the profit and charlene purchased it so the buy cost was nothing for me however if you can find these jackets for say 20 25 dollars i typically would say they are pretty smart to pick up and they are great profits up next is another item i ran on auction i was hoping for more than i started it at but i didn't get it i only got one bid however i am only five dollars into this this is a sterling crown trafari alfred felipe patent pending red eye rhinestone bird fur clip i again got this in an online auction only paid five dollars for it it sold for one bid one bid is all i got and this one sold for 99.99 it is sterling silver it is a crown trafari here you can see it up close it was in very good condition there were no rhinestones missing and you can see that beautiful photo room ai photo there and that was a great sale so whenever you do these auctions make sure you do them at the lowest you are willing to take for me i wanted at least 99 dollars which i did get and that yielded about an $80 profit for me. And it sold in seven days because I did a seven day auction. Up next is another jewelry item. So with buying all of the jewelry I buy to sell on whatnot, if you don't know, I sell on whatnot typically four to five nights a week. We do sterling silver, we do new gemstone, I do vintage and estate. So I buy hundreds of pounds of jewelry every single month. And when I see the names like these that I know will sell fast on eBay, I pull them to sell on eBay because my reasoning for putting items for a lower price on whatnot is that they're going to take maybe six months to a year to sell. So I'm okay making a little profit, let somebody else make a lot of profit, but they have to hold on to it for that six months or so. But if these items are fast selling, I am better off to take them, put them on eBay, whether it be auction or buy it now and make more money. So tonight, if you would like to join me at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, I will be doing my first scheduled Poshmark Live. If you are already on Poshmark, I'm running 50 items over there, a mix of uh, silver plated gemstone as well as vintage and estate jewelry. So we will see how that goes. I just wanna try it out. I am all about different platforms, kind of not putting all my eggs in one basket. And yeah, so I'm excited to do my first catalog show if you would like to check it out and this next one is another from a sterling silver lot another named one that i knew would sell fast this is a vintage sign perusi sterling another floor de lis you're gonna see a lot of floor de lis in here keep an eye on those floor de lis this one is sterling i did put victorian art deco it sold for a hundred dollars and it sold in again under two weeks very very fast selling this one you can see it here up close 
beautiful detail on the floor de lis and i did want to show you the back where i was able to identify it where it says perosi sterling so if you were to find this in a jewelry lot or perhaps at an estate sale you would definitely be able to identify it and this one was about an 80 dollar profit up next is another item I pulled out of an online jewelry lot, but it is not jewelry. This is another vintage mesh purse. However, this one was a named one. This is a vintage Whiting and Davis expandable top gold mesh purse. It is called a beggar's bag. It is a chain mail purse. This one sold for $99.99. I paid less than $5 per probably closer to two dollars for this one in a jewelry lot occasionally there will be these smaller purses in the jewelry lot here you can see that purse up close another photo room ai photo and here you can see on the inside the tag that says mesh whiting and davis bags so these are identifiable if the tags have not been cut out and that was a great sale at 99.99 all right, up next is some pottery. I haven't been picking up a ton of pottery, but when I pick these up, and you probably have seen these in my other high dollar videos because I've sold a lot of them for over $100, just like these two bowls. This is a vintage set of two Lewis Meideke six inch bowls, studio pottery. I did put Asian, Oriental, and Noodle. Pay attention to my titles here because those keywords are what sells your items. So on this one, I did accept an offer of $97.01. And I am only, I'm $8 into each. So $16 in here. I did want to zoom in up close and show you these. And if you look on that right bowl, you can see it clearly says Mighty Key. Very, very easy to identify. So you know, he is actually a Northwest Potter. I got lucky and bought a whole collection from someone who had moved here to Florida. And this one is going to be about a $55 to $60 profit. Up next is an item I took a chance on because it is a one of a kind item but it was a known figure this is a don quixote it was actually a trophy that was awarded to someone but i picked it up in a local online estate sale it took about a year to sell but it was a great profit just know be very very careful picking those one-off items up or you could end up with a giant inventory that takes forever to sell so be very 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 careful i knew i could keyword it with don quixote and pottery that is what made me kind of decide to pick this up, but be very, very careful doing that. This is a one of a kind pottery Don Quixote sculpture. I did put figure Spanish statue. I did put Dali large 12 inches. This one, I actually accepted a best offer of almost half off $100, but I won this in an auction and only paid $5 for it. So it's still about an $80 profit. I wanted to zoom in here and show you the detail on this Don Quixote statue was absolutely amazing. And again, it was a statue that was awarded to somebody, came up in that local auction, took about a year, but it ended up being a great profit. All right, we've got another one that I took almost 50% off. So when sales are slow, when you have had the item a long time sometimes you kind of have to step back to that original price you were hoping to get for it and say i'm only you know 20 bucks into this item it's a hundred dollar offer i'm gonna make 60 to 70 dollars take it take it sometimes it's a pride thing at least for me it is and i have to make myself wait like my instinct is to decline However, I take into account many different things when I decide whether to take that offer or not. This is a Kinetico Inc. Baseball Player Kinetic Number 100 Series Sculpture. This was by the artist Brat. 
this one I had listed at $162. I did take a best offer of $113.74. And I paid $40 for this at a garage sale. So I'm only making about $40, $45. However, I had had it for a long time and I was happy to see it go to a new home. Watch for kinetic sculptures, especially if they're lower priced, because some of them are more valuable than this. Up next is a blanket this one i wasn't sure if it was san marcos it was definitely san marcos style the tag had been removed so i put san marcos in a question mark i do think it's okay if you believe the item very possibly is that a little bit different from keyword spamming where you put all these you know expensive brands in there that you know the item is not in this case i was just unsure so i did make sure to put a question mark after the san marcos name this is a vintage san marcos blanket grizzly bear it was 81 by 58 i did put twin size throw and moose there were moose all over it as well here you can see it zoomed in close it's got the bear in the center and then the moose on the bottom and top and this one didn't take very long to sell it actually sold in under two months and this one I picked up at a thrift store. I paid $5 and it is about a $70 profit. Up next is another jewelry item. This one is sterling silver gemstone. It is Petoskey, which is a really, really cool stone. I absolutely love all gemstones. If you watch me on whatnot, you know that. I just think rocks are cool, right? But... This one was a big statement bracelet and knowing my audience i didn't feel i would get more than 50 dollars for it on whatnot so i decided to put it over on ebay and it actually sold in under a month this is a vintage statement cuff michigan petoskey stone bracelet it was sterling silver it was large this one i had listed and it's sold at full price of $129.99 here you can see it up close the craftsmanship on this as well as the quality of that Petoskey stone was top notch so this one sold in under a month and I did pay up for this I paid about $20 for this one and it is going to be about an $80 profit up next is another jewelry item quite a few so i again have been very selective in what i pull and put on ebay now and almost all of them that i do choose to do that with sell fast this one is a joan rivers brooch that sold in two days this is a vintage joan rivers classics collection i do learn that by using google lens if you are wondering how i know what collection it came from this one is a large statement swan brooch you can see again that gorgeous ai photo this one sold for a best offer of 140 dollars this is another one that was in a big lot i am way less than five dollars into it so this one is well over a hundred dollar profit here you can see that ai photo room photo up close i absolutely love how jewelry looks with that and i did want to show you on the back here joan rivers pieces to my knowledge are all marked so you would be able to identify it and that one was a great fast sale again i did accept an offer of 140 dollars up next is a green celadon vase if you want to know how i identified this this came from an antique store that must have closed down and i got it in a local in-person auction i've only been twice in the past three years to in-person auction but this one still had the tag from the antique store identifying it as a celadon vase it sold for 85 dollars and under a week this is a vintage antique bud vase olive green celadon i did put classic shape i do like to put flowers and floral with my vases if there is enough room this one again sold super fast i am less than five dollars into this so this one is about a 65 to 70 dollar profit 
All right, up next is a Kachina doll. I haven't bought any Kachinas in over a year. So if you see me selling Kachinas right now, I've had them for a little while. This Kachina was a great sale, but it did take over a year to sell. So with some of these one of a kind things, you just gotta wait for the right buyer. This is a vintage signed E. Pooley Mudhead Kachina. I did identify it from the 50s to 60s. It was only six inches tall. This one again is another, I accepted a lower offer. I accepted a hundred dollar offer on this one. And this one, you can see here up close, it's not overly detailed, pretty simple. And I do want to show you here on the bottom, it is clearly signed Mudhead by El Pooley. And that was a great sale, $100. I did pay $10 for this one. So it is about a $65 profit. Up next is another item that was in a jewelry lot that is not jewelry, but it's a trinket box. I have done a video. There are a lot of these little tiny trinket box worth hundreds and hundreds. This one is a J Strong Water and it sold in about a week. This is a vintage J Strong Water jeweled strawberry trinket box. I did put ladybug jewelry and crystals. Somebody sent me an offer of $174.91 and I accepted again less than a week in here you can see it up close this is another gorgeous photo room ai photo really really makes a difference i feel with these jewelry and collectibles and i did want to show you here on the bottom of this one very very clearly marked j strongwater i did pay about 20 dollars for this i got it in a lot i had to pay up because they put j strongwater in the title because they know that J Strongwater sells for a bit and this one is about a hundred probably about a hundred and twenty dollar profit up next is a gorgeous Eichel glass perfume bottle took a while to sell but an absolutely amazing sale i am going to show you the signature on the bottom so if you find glass perfume bottles you will know a name to look for this is a vintage i colt 1988 iridescent art glass this is pulled feather style this one sold for $194.34. It did sell for full asking price. It was on sale. And here you can see it up close, the beautiful, beautiful blue-green iridescent pulled feather on this one. And I wanted to show you here, this was my photo of the bottom. iColt was pretty easy to read on this one, as well as that 1988. So Lalique is another one that you can definitely watch for and be very, very aware of signatures on the bottom of glass pieces and try to identify them. This one was a great sale. I only paid $20 for this in an online auction. Again, it did take over a year to sell, but it sold for $194. So it is about $120 profit. Up next is a WDCC figurine. This one I had for about a year and a half, but it sold for over $200. I originally picked this up for 50. I did have it listed for over 300. Same thing I told you earlier, if sales are slow, I'm gonna take a look at those lower offers a little bit closer before I decline or counter offer them. And a lot of them I end up accepting. This is a WDCC Disney Enthroned Evil Queen figurine. I did put Snow White. I did put C. This one actually had been repaired, which was another reason that I was a little more amenable to taking an offer on it. And this one, I accepted an offer of $227.05. So almost $100 off. I did want to show you her here up close. I think... A piece of the feathers had actually been replaced it's really hard to tell but even if you can't tell and I notice it I do want 
to point that out to people because if they notice it and you have not disclosed it it could be a little bit tricky for you when they get it you might have to accept a return or you might have to give them more of a discount so i do always disclose that if i am aware of what is going on and here on the bottom i wanted to show you it does clearly say disney villain snow white and the seven dwarfs this one was limited only to being produced in the year 2000 so there weren't a limited number of pieces it was just limited to being produced for that one year and this was a great sale 227 and about a hundred dollar profit all right up next are two auction items they are both Trafari and they are both Fleur de Lis watch watch for those Fleur de Lis check them for names there are a lot of them as you have seen quite a few here on this video alone there are quite a few that are valuable this first one I'm going to show you is a vintage Crown Trafari Fleur de Lis brooch. This one was green. I did put signed and you can see I used that AI photo there. These were both auctions. I started them at $99. This one was bid up to $143.50 and I am less than five in. So this one is well over a hundred dollar profit. And then here the second one was the same pen but in blue this one surprisingly only got two or three bids it only went to 112.50 and same five dollars in so about an 85 dollar profit on that one i do want to show you the back of one of them here because it was the same on both you can see it is clearly marked trafari these Fleur de Lis and the colors are quite rare. The solid gold tone ones are out there. There are quite a few listed. The colors are the ones that are more desirable. So together on those two, about a $200 profit. Up next is a brass candle holder this one was a really really cool piece it was only about 12 inches tall it took over two years to sell one of a kind rare you might be holding it for a while this is an antique brass victorian female figural candlestick holder i did put goddess and running torch this one i had listed at 519 dollars I only paid, I think I paid less than $20 for this one. So I had it a while. Somebody sent me an offer of $250 and I accepted it. Same thing I've talked about throughout the video. Accepted it, made over a $200 profit. Here you can see it up close. Super, super cool how she's holding the double candle holder and a great sale but one that took a long time to get up next is a really really cool flow blue piece and i actually picked five flow blue pieces up in an online auction i paid about 50 dollars a piece but i knew these were worth money i've already sold two others this is the third to sell i've had them for about a year now this is a ford F and Sons Flow Blue Douglas Covered Vegetable Sauce or Terrine Serving Dish. This one sold for $259.35. I paid $50, so it is about a $150 profit after fees. Here you can see it up close. It was in excellent condition for the age. And I did want to show you here on the bottom, one, you're going to see crazing, which is definitely to be expected with a piece that is older like this. And you can clearly read, it says F and Sons Douglas Bursum. So very, very easy to identify. However, when I purchased this terrine, I don't think I knew the names. I just knew there were five flow blue terrines that looked to be in good condition. Took a chance on them. I did pay up but definitely a great sale and a great profit all right this video has been a long one so if you've hung out with me this long thank you so much i'm gonna try and remember to do them once a month 
I need to put a reminder in my phone. We are up to our top five selling items. This next one is another one that was an auction. My husband had a big collection of open Pokemon cards. He ran them on auction at $299, did not get any bids. I said, look, you're going to have to be a little braver, go a little lower. So he did. He lowered the auction to a $99 start. They sold for $289. So almost what he wanted in the first place. This is a Pokemon card lot binder in bulk. New and vintage cards. He did put thousands of cards in lot. I didn't look at his title. I probably could have improved that title a little bit, but that is okay. It was his listing, his sale. He started it at $99 and it ended up selling for $289. Here you can see he shows stacks and stacks of cards as well as a full binder. I don't know what he had into this, but he was ready to let them go. So we will just say probably not a profit. It's probably <laughs> break even or losing, but that is okay. He was ready to let them go and they were a good sale. Up next is something you probably would not expect to see from me, but over the years I have learned certain things that I know are worth money two-way radios is one of those things i picked these up at an online auction i paid less than 50 dollars for them they sold in about four months so not super super long this is a lot of two motorola cp200 radios and chargers i did put plus an extra battery they sold for full asking price of $324, making them over a $200 profit. Again, about four months to sell, not really too bad and a great profit. So if you see radios, check them out. Motorola is a definite, definite pickup. Check that model number and you could be looking at hundreds of dollars in profit. Up next is a piece of furniture. I have not sold furniture in a long time. That means I've had it for a long time. I've had it over two years. And this is another one kind of like the vases where I said they bought one. I said, hey, I have two of these. Do you want the other one? They said yes. I was lucky in this instance that they lived about an hour away. So these were a local pickup sale that sold on eBay. This is an Ethan Allen CRP 30 inch heirloom nutmeg levered door console cabinet. It did have record holders. It was kind of cool. I had it listed at $500. I took a best offer of $375. I got these and a lot of Ethan Allen furniture that I found on Marketplace. So I used to find furniture a little bit more often since gas prices have went up, freight has went up and my space has decreased i have not been looking for furniture but they bought two of them for me at that 375 so they paid 750 i was a hundred dollars in so these are over a 500 dollars profit but again they took years and years to sell up next is something else i haven't sold in a while and that is swarovski swarovski is another thing sets I look for the colorful figurines can be worth thousands of dollars so keep an eye out for those this is a Swarovski nativity set this is a vintage Swarovski crystal nativity set 1993 it was an eight piece set new in the box I accepted an offer on this one of $363. I picked this up in an online auction for $100. So I still made over a $200 profit. Again, had this for a long time. So took that offer. Here you can see it up close. So this was actually in about three Swarovski boxes and the display box. And super easy to ship because Swarovski comes with that styrofoam. Watch out when you see these Swarovski sets. Typically the clear smaller statues aren't going to be worth much unless they're like Disney or something like that. But the sets as well as the colorful crystal can sell for a lot. All right. Last one, highest dollar sale. If you haven't seen it on another video, I sold this gorgeous Romero Brito painting. It was numbered one of 12. It was an artist proof, did have COA. 
I only paid 500 and this one sold for $3,000. This is a Romero Brito Mother Artist Sign Proof 1 of 12. I did put screen print gesso board. It was with the COA accepted an offer of $3,000. I did have to give a $300 refund on this. So I ended up getting $2,700 because it got scratched either here in the shed or in shipping. We are not sure where it got scratched. So I went ahead and gave her a $300 refund out of my pocket and I was still happy with that. And here you can see the painting up close. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Romero Brito is easily identified. He has all kinds of different things. So watch out for this kind of color scheme and look. And I did want to show you the COA. It says the artist, how many of the proofs were made, which is 12. It does have that seal there. And it does say it is edition one of 12. So this was a great sale. Again, gave that refund $2,700 was the final price which after fees gives me about two thousand and i ended up with a fifteen hundred dollar profit i did pay three hundred dollars to have this delivered by uship i do have a video on uship if you're interested in that and this was a great great sale that one did take about a year though to sell it took a little bit longer so i appreciate you watching again i know it's been a long video I love sharing my sales with you. I love hanging out with you. I hope to see you tonight on my Posh Live if you are on Poshmark. If not, come check us out tomorrow night on Whatnot. I appreciate you watching. I, oh, I've got to show you some pictures. I have a new grandbaby. I wait, I forgot and waited till the end. I got to go meet my new grandbaby, Atlas. He was born last night and he was six pounds 14 ounces 20 inches long so here are a few photos of me and baby atlas dalton hasn't got to meet him yet because the kids aren't allowed in the hospital but my mom and myself went up there today so we are happy healthy beautiful baby boy thank you so much for all the congrats i did post pictures over on instagram and facebook and i will see you on the next one bye guys